Welcome to the Avalanche Explorer tool. In this short video, we'd like to introduce you to some of the tools on this page so you can quickly and efficiently filter the data for your particular needs. I'll start by a brief description of the map on the left-hand side of the page here. All of the colored dots show the location of avalanche occurrences. The colors match the trigger types that are both present in the pie chart here and in the table. We'll circle back to the map in just a bit, but for now I'd like to start on the right-hand side of the page, right up at the top with the different filters. Here is your date filter. The default is avalanches that have taken place over the last week. If I click the drop-down, I can choose from some predetermined time periods, or I can click a custom date range. In this case, if I'm just interested in avalanches that have taken place over the last four days, I click a start date, I click an end date, and then I click apply and you notice that this number will drop. This number will always indicate the number of avalanches that are in your filtered data set. I can also filter by observation type, backcountry highway or unknown. Throughout, UNK stands for unknown. I can filter by avalanche type per the definitions in the Snow Weather and Avalanche Guidelines publication. If I only wanna look at the 21 hard slab avalanches, I simply choose that You'll see my filtered number now reflects the 21. Or if I want to look at the more ubiquitous soft slab avalanches, I simply click on that. Let's reset things to look at all avalanche types. Let's go back to our default view of the last seven days. And I'm back to my 346 avalanches that were in my original filtered data set. Moving into the zone table, I, you can see along the x-axis are the 10 backcountry forecast zones. And along the y-axis are the number of avalanches. I can look at avalanches in any particular zone by simply clicking on that bar. You can see the map is now centered on the 56 avalanches that occurred in the front range zone over the last week. I can look at any combination of one or more forecast zones by clicking on the bars. If I was interested in avalanches just in the northern mountains, I'd simply click on those three forecast zones. The map will center over there, and I've got 137 avalanches that have taken place in the northern mountains over the last week. I can always reset by going up to the top right and clicking on the reset button. The avalanche rows has several filtering functions, and we'll start by introducing the elevation filter. Below, near and above stand for the three elevation bands of below tree line, near tree line, and above tree line. If I click on below, I will just get avalanches that have taken place in the outer ring or the below tree line elevation band. Similarly for near tree line and above tree line. If I click on the vertical bar between below and near tree line, I will get avalanches in the lower two elevation bands. And if I click on the vertical line between near and above tree line, I will get avalanches that have taken place in the upper two elevation bands. I can also filter by cardinal direction. If I click on north, I will just get avalanches that have taken place on northerly aspects. Similar for east, south, and westerly aspects. And again, I can reset by clicking the reset button in the upper right. I can filter avalanches by any aspect and elevation combination that I'm interested in. For example, if I was only interested in avalanches that have taken place on northeast facing slopes near tree line, I simply click on that particular pie wedge. You can see here now my filtered data set is dropped to 20, and that matches the number that's contained in that particular pie wedge. If I'm only interested in avalanches on north and northeast facing slopes at all elevations, I just select the pie wedges of interest, and then I will get the filtered data set I need. I can filter by avalanche trigger type. Here in the pie chart, if there is room, you will see a textual label. Here are explosives, natural, and human. If I hover over the colored space, I will get additional help. So here you can see I have 105 explosive triggered avalanches. The purple wedge here does not have a textual label because there's no room, but I can always get that information by just hovering over the purple. In this case, 11 unknown avalanches. Keep in mind, if I hover over the text itself, I will not get the additional pop-up help. You need to be hovering over the color in the pie wedge itself. The same thing applies when you're filtering avalanches by size. You have two choices for looking at size. The default is destructive size of avalanches, but I can click on the R 
and look at the relative size of avalanches as well. Similar to trigger, I can look at any combination of sizes that I would like. So for example, if I was only interested in avalanches that were size D2 or bigger, I would just click on those particular pie wedges. I don't know what this one means, but again, if I hover over, I can see I've got 14 D3 size avalanches. Those are certainly interesting, so I'm just going to click on that pie wedge. You can see I've got one left. Oh, I've got four unknown. Maybe I'll leave that out of my data set. And again, I can reset in the upper right. If we come down to our avalanche table, we've got several ways to look at the data. The small balloon will center the map on that particular observation. And I can always get more information by clicking on the detailed report pop out. This will take me to the field report from which the original avalanche data came from. I can also go directly to the field report by just clicking on the pop out window next to the little balloon. All of the column headers are sortable in ascending or descending order. And I can always hover over any of the letters to get additional pop out. So in this case, I can see that my avalanche type is soft slab for SS and a hard slab for HS. If I forgot my trigger codes, I can always scroll over and be like, ah, AS, that means it was skier triggered. I can do the same thing for elevation, aspect, R size, and D size. If I scroll down to the time series, I can scroll down through the colored boxes and this will highlight avalanches of a particular size along the time series. In this case, I'm highlighting size D 2.5 avalanches. I can click on any particular day that I want. Looks here like here, December 24th had quite a number of avalanches. So I'll click on that date. And you can see I had 111 avalanches that took place on December 24th. I can pick any number of days that I would like, or just look at everything that's happened in the last week. As we mentioned before, you can scroll in and out of the map, and you can see that we have got a lot of colored dots that match the colors in the trigger code. However, you can see there's a number of yellow dots with numbers in them. Those yellow dots indicate that we have multiple avalanches in close proximity. As an example, here I've got a yellow dot with eight. That means I've got eight avalanche observations in close proximity in this location. If I click on that dot, the avalanches will spoke out from the number and you can see I've got my eight avalanches, one, two, three, four, five, six of them were green or naturally triggered. One was human triggered and the purple is unknown. Some other ways I can filter the data on the map is by using the lasso tool. If I click on this, I can draw any kind of circle that I want and it will filter the data. In this case, I've got 138 avalanches that have taken place in this cluster over the last week. I can always reset the lasso by clicking on the X and this will take me back to my original data set of 346 avalanches. I can find my location by clicking on the find my location button right here. And that will take me to where I'm at here in Carbondale. I can always turn that off and scroll back out. Lastly, if you're looking for additional help, you can click on the question mark here. This will open up our web page, which provides a textual description and some graphics in addition to the help that's provided in this video. We hope you find this tool useful and it allows you to filter the data to help inform your decisions in the backcountry and give you a better idea of trends and patterns in avalanche activity.